What up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm joined by my favorite friend, my trusty yellow sweatshirt. And uh, even though I tried, I could not get my hair to look as good as Jake from CVP, so whatever. Moving on, today's video is all about Red, V-Raptor, and Komodo X, and the autofocus capabilities that have just been released for the new firmware. Today we're gonna to test the V-Raptor and the Komodo X against the C500 Mark II that has impeccable autofocus to begin with and just see how they stack up. So we're doing this test in a couple different ways. We're using face detection, we're using uh, just continuous setting boxes, testing in regular lighting, testing in low lighting, testing with a Sigma 24 to 70 EF mount lens on an RF EF adapter, as well as testing a Canon RF mount uh, 24 to 70 as well. So with that being said, we're just gonna run through some footage here showing different things and talking a little bit about where things perform better or worse. Now in these tests, we're doing stuff like dolly moves, we're doing some walk and talks, we're just shooting face detection and things like that so we can get a vibe for what does what. So the Canon autofocus is a fantastic system. We all know this. Maybe you don't use a whole lot of autofocus. Who cares? Canon still crushes at autofocus capabilities within their lenses and their camera system. But RED is starting to catch up with this new face detection. We're just gonna show some dolly shots and some moves and some things like that. Just take a peek real quick and see how these kind of go toe to toe, lens to lens. Now where Canon starts to shine a little bit over RED is when there's multiple faces in your frame. I think the RED maybe struggles a bit on which one it wants to go to or which one it wants to prioritize, even though on the RED you can set it to closest found face. Uh, it seems it like wants to jump a little bit. On the Canon, it's pretty good about staying exactly where you tell it to. And on the Canon, it'll show you both boxes and you can use the hand grip that's usually on the side to toggle back and forth between which face you want. Especially cool if you're doing a double up walk and talk or something like that where somebody's lagging, somebody's dragging, you can just you know go in and do your thing. That being said, both cameras I feel like start to fall apart when the other face is just very, very out of focus. So if they're on a near plane and you can clearly see both faces, um, they do a both good job of picking them both up, but the Canon has a better edge on keeping one as a priority over the other. Another place where the Canon shines quite a bit more than the red is just extreme low light conditions. Low light being it's very underexposed. So if you walk into a dark alley and you can't hardly see anything, the Canon does a better job of recognizing objects and pulling focus to them as you would. It does start to fall apart as well, but it performs better than the red in that specific aspect. Now, the red isn't bad in low light, it's just not as good as what I will call an industry leader like the Canon.
What's interesting to me is the red is closer to the top of the pack than the bottom of the pack. And to me, that's a really big and progressive upgrade from red on their new cinema cameras. That being said, in my opinion, as someone who mostly is a manual focus shooter on pretty much everything, either myself or an AC, for the times where I need autofocus, which is few and far between, to be honest, for everything I need in my line of work, this camera performs almost and pretty close to as well as the C500 in most shooting circumstances that I personally would need autofocus for. Now, if you really rely on AF for a ton of stuff that you do, definitely Canon is going to give you a better option. That being said, I never really thought that in any way I'd be making a video talking about how good the Red's AF was at any point in my career. It's really great that another manufacturer is stepping up and adding those sorts of things to just add uh, usability to make your investment more worth it from a feature set perspective. Okay, last but not least, where do we rank these cameras compared to other manufacturers just if there was a grading system? I think Sony is gonna be at the top, followed closely by Canon. From there, if you start looking at all the other manufacturers making cameras, I think Red sits right under Canon, and then I think there's a pretty significant jump from there to other manufacturers like Panasonic, Sigma, uh, Fuji, and the likes Nikon that are doing uh, AF for video. Red has definitely taken a big leap into getting closer to that upper echelon of AF capabilities, and I, for one, even though I don't use AF a ton, really appreciate the feature set because there are times when you do want to use it and it is better to have the option and not need it than need it and not have it. And one cool thing about the RED system is a accompanying app called RED Control. Now in RED Control, this is where the RED system starts to maybe add some feature sets that the C500 uh, doesn't have that kind of start to balance the scorecard a little bit. Now the RED Control, it's really cool because both of these will send an image directly to your phone, but then you can use your phone as a touch to tap focus area, as well as almost having like what looks like a follow focus wheel. And you can sit there and dial your focus in from the phone, almost like a manual follow focus, but over the air, which is really cool. Now, I can see this touch to focus being incredibly useful on shoots where, let's say you have an AC and there's a lot of complex blocking and you're running something like maybe the Komodo X on a gimbal. Well, your AC can just follow you around with the phone or a tablet and just touch to focus as needed. No need about getting marks or seeing who's, if they hit. Basically, if you don't know your variables and they're repeatable, this is a really great system to just on the fly, nail focus left and right. And it's, and actually it performs surprisingly well. It's very snappy as soon as you touch, it focuses, does well in pretty good lighting scenarios. And overall, just kind of like, does its thing without a whole lot of input. So that's a really strong piece of an accompanying part of the AF system in red. All right, so come back from the footage, where else do these stack up against something like a Canon and a Sony? Well, Canon and Sony just have a lot more built-in AI tools for things that recognize specific objects. Like a, just the first one is like eye detection. That one's massive. I'm sure that will be in red at some point, but eye detection on Canon as well as Sony is a big one, but also recognizing things like objects like cars and pets and things like that. All of that built in gives just a little more robustness to the system. So with that, that's pretty much the end of the video. It's really great to see these AF improvements hitting Red's cinema lineup, because as the old adage goes, it is better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. While I don't shoot a ton of AF myself, it is great to have these options in camera for the times when I may need them on my shoots. So with that, thanks for watching. Remember, like and subscribe, and hell, I guess we'll see you on the next one.